What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. Today's video we're just going to be doing a real estate Q&A where I asked everybody on my Instagram to submit a question and stay tuned because if you submitted a question you have a chance to win $20 if we choose your question. Just comment down below and I'll get you your money. But anyway we get questions all the time both Rihanna and I even though I'm the one that's I guess more in depth in real estate and does it professionally and I thought it'd be fun just to kind of film a video just answering real estate specific questions and uh, don't worry for the ones that just follow for our before and after and our house tours we have new videos coming later this month of some really cool houses so anyway without any further ado we're gonna jump into this video and get started we're gonna start this off with a very broad question but it's something really important to think about and that is how do you figure out if a deal is a good or a bad deal the numbers I mean that's really it the numbers are going to dictate whether it's a good deal or a bad deal you need to know exactly what you're looking for what type of profit margins what type of cash flow and you need to make sure that the deal can produce that and then that's what determines if it's a good deal or a bad deal it's all about the numbers in this game and guys real quick there's a lot of questions here so we're just going to kind of shoot through them and answer them as quickly as i can but as accurately as i can but if you guys want to get more in depth with this you guys definitely need to check out our community more than money the link in the description will be down below we just had two new awesome people join our team Josh and Allie from the FI couple we'll tag their Instagram down below as well as ours and we would love to, for you guys to join the community we're gonna go live several times a month talking about all this stuff and we will dive deep into each one of these questions all right let's get back on topic question number two is really relevant in this market and it is how can I compete with cash buyers <laughs> <laughs> that's tough so I'm somebody uh, my partners and I are ones that receive the cash offers and yes, uh, unfortunately for people without cash, we're going to go with those faster or accept those faster because usually they don't have any type of financing contingencies. In fact, they don't if they're cash offers. So that's a lot of time saved and a lot of worrying saved because remember, if you're going through financing, anything can happen. It can fall out for any reason uh, or the buyers could do something. Uh, I don't want to say stupid, but it is a little stupid when they go and finance stuff mid financing and then their loan does not go through and then now we have to put it back on the market so with a cash offer we're usually always going to accept that first as long as it's within reason of the other offer and also there are businesses out there this is something you can research i don't know the exact answer on this and i don't want to give answers on things i haven't researched but i think there's companies out there that will spot you the cash for your cash offer and then they will wait on your financing now that's going to come with a fee of course yeah. but that is a way to keep up with other cash offers uh let's say it's an extra five thousand dollars for them to hold your place they'll put the cash up front and then after the deal is closed you come in the back end with financing but that front company is kind of risking it there a little bit because what if you don't get your financing anyway there are companies out there but yes cash offers cash is king and that's always going to be the case at least in today's market can you manage real estate investments without it being your full-time job could i answer this one yeah go ahead okay because i have a full-time job so um john does manage most of our real estate investments but i would say you can to a certain extent especially rental properties those are something that you could manage on your own time and house flips you could do as well not on the scale that john and his partners do them on because they have to be very involved every day all day but you could definitely manage real estate rentals for sure and flips on a smaller scale yeah you could make it almost fully passive if you wanted to it's going to depend on a few things the scale of which you have your portfolio so if you have 600 properties it's probably going to be a full-time position or if you're flipping 40 houses a year like my partners and i again that's going to be you know pretty time intensive but if you only have one or two rental properties and you have a good property manager, you can make this extremely passive. So it's really just gonna depend on how involved or uninvolved you wanna be and how big you wanna grow this thing. This is a really good question because it's kind of something we're changing in our personal real estate game just as of recently, but it is how do you decide when to sell one of your flips or hold it? <laughs> again the numbers the numbers always decide everything but also your strategy some people are out here just to hold on to properties and that's great some people just want to flip for a big check that they can have right now because they have uh, it's a means to an end they have another investment they want to do or a bigger portfolio they want to buy and they need that flip money now uh, so that really depends on your own strategy and your own finances right now and also your goals okay this next question is one that we get and John gets literally probably at least 10 times a day. And that is, <laughs> should I buy right now in this market or wait for it to go back down? Oh boy. So the market is definitely going to correct on December 12th at 9 a.m. <laughs> the, the market's going to crash and you're gonna to wanna to go all in. Oh 
knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> you know, Nobody knows. knows. Like I wish I knew. If I, if I knew for sure, you know, I would tell all of you. Promise you, I wouldn't keep it a secret. Uh, but nobody knows for sure. This market does keep going up and up and up, and it seems like nothing can hold it back. Uh, but what goes up must come down and sure there will be a correction there will be a crash when I have no idea I can't even guarantee we'll see another one in our lifetime because we're so overdue for one right now so buy smart just always buy smart no matter the market so always make sure you're getting a good deal for the time you are buying now sure a good deal right now might not have been a good deal a year ago or a year in the future but buy a good deal for right now and just do the best you can and quit worrying about the market all the time or otherwise you may never buy or you may sell too early or too late you're never going to time it perfectly so just do the best you can in the moment that is solid advice do you raise rents if so how much and how often uh, of course we raise rents, uh, but Rihanna and I do it pretty slowly. Also, if we uh, buy a new building and there's already tenants in there, we don't come in and just hit them over the head out the gate. We make improvements first. We introduce ourselves. We let them get to trust us and understand that we're very good landlords. And then we go in with the ask. And usually we just bring it up to whatever the market is. You know, we're not trying to, uh, you know, raise them over what people can manage. Or So let's say somebody's in there paying $800 a month right now and the market average is $850. Maybe that first year we bring them to 825 and the second year to 850 and then we'll push it up from there but yes rents have to go up because property taxes go up expenses go up management goes up material goes up uh, contractors go up so yes uh, as prices rise rents rise as well we all know that um, but we like to do it within reason and we do it carefully and after we have proven that there's a reason for us raising the rents we give value first and then ask for the rents to be raised in return Absolutely. And none of our tenants had any problems when we raised the rent. We talked to them about it each personally. They were totally fine with it. And then the other times we raise the rent besides right when we acquire a property is when um, the lease is up and either new people are moving in or the person's renewing their lease and we talk to them. And we give plenty of heads up as well. And I just look at the market averages and look, if they're already at the around the average, I will not raise rents. Even if I think I can get another 10 or $15 a month, you know, I usually won't push them because if they're a great tenant, a good tenant is well worth it way over an extra 10 or 15 dollars a month so keep that in mind too don't just try to squeeze every nickel and dime out of rents make sure you have good tenants as well because they could be worth way more than what you're going to get in return from higher rents next question is what do you think the traits are that makes somebody like made for real estate you have to be crazy <laughs> <laughs> no but really um you know it is definitely a different type of personality being this game it's, it's an entrepreneurship can game. i say the traits because i think that the traits that make you good at it i know okay go ahead okay um detail oriented disciplined motivated and like empathetic to other situations yeah you probably don't need that last one but i'd <laughs> like to see more of it you know it actually could cost you a lot of money being empathetic but i think that it's important so we're very value and uh morally driven mm -hmm. uh in our businesses so I, I think that's important but you probably don't need that last one but i would like to see more of it oh i'll add one to the end of that always do what you say you're going to do oh to your yeah. tenants to your contractors to yourself always do what you say you're going to do and you'll be successful at almost anything that's great. That's great advice. Do you think pulling equities from one of your properties to fund another deal is a good or bad idea? Absolutely fine as long as you're educated on leveraging debt. As, did you hear that? As long as you're educated on leveraging debt. A lot of people like to pull equity out of their house. If you don't know what equity is, equity is just basically the amount of money you have in your home from what you owe on it. So let's say you owe the bank $150,000. let us say the market says it's worth two hundred and fifty dollars right now. You have $100,000 in equity and usually the bank will give you something in between like sixty dollars or $70,000 on that. It's usually based on a percentage. So you could pull out sixty dollars or $70,000 and do with it whatever you want. That can be dangerous, right? Because people like to buy boats and cars and go shopping and go on vacations. But if you're gonna pull that, let's say you pull 50,000 out in equity and you use it as a down payment on another property, that can actually be very intelligent. So again, yes, it's fine to do that as long as you're educated on leveraging debt. This next question is gonna be the winner. And this is from Mike McKinney 18. So if you're watching this, DM John on Instagram to claim your prize. And his question was, if you could start over um, knowing what you know now, what would y'all do differently? And I just thought this was a great question, so that's why I fixed it. As the it's way. easy. Start yeah. earlier. Yeah. Start earlier. That's, I mean, it, um, you know, we missed out on lots of money by not starting earlier. Now, 
you know, hindsight's always 2020. And like I talk to a lot of the people that I consult. So also I do consulting calls. You can follow me on Instagram and I'll post them when I have them available. I don't have a lot, but a lot of people that I consult always feel like they're missing out or did something wrong. And I always say hindsight's 2020. We could have always did something better or different if we look back. So you can only really change what's going forward, right? And yes, I beat myself up too. I'm not perfect or, you know, what's a, a, an altruist or anything like that. But um, it is true that you could always do something better. But if I had to tell the younger people that I'm talking to or anybody really, just start as soon as possible. Educate yourself as soon as possible um, because compounding really does work for you, not against you. It actually can work both. So it works for you if you're using your money and it works against you if you're not. So just start earlier. You are like doing so good with the motivational speaking today. <laughs> Sounds so encouraging. I'm about to get out there and buy flips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inspired to do vlogging because of your channel. What kind of camera do you use? This is a fun answer. Yeah, so th you know this one, right? Yeah, but for your vlogging. Oh, yeah. So actually, <laughs> we started off with this Canon M50, which we do our talking head videos with, but it's actually a big kind of rig. We'll link it below. Uh, yeah, but our phones yeah for all the house walkthroughs we use our cell phones we have androids and um galaxy, galaxy s20 yeah. plus and uh it does fantastic <laughs> now just pull the phone out hit record and uh hold it steady and that's it that's all we have to do to make videos and we make a lot more videos a lot quickly and they've been better yes in the words of gary v focus on documenting not creating absolutely would being a landlord or flipping homes be more profitable being a landlord, or it depends. I mean, are you Based a good flipper? Long term. Long term. Oh, yeah. So let's say all things are equal and you're good at both. Holding is going to be more profitable because you're going to make money on that property forever. You know, so flipping is one check where landlording or holding is a forever check. So that's what, how people usually say it. Actually, I think the saying goes wholesaling is a quick check. Flipping is a big check and holding is a forever check. And so, I like that. yeah, so that's, uh, if you're going to make money forever, you know, especially if you're younger, then holding the property is going to pay you a lot more over the course of time uh, because you have depreciation. You're going to have appreciation if you're fortunate, but if you hold it long enough, you will. Um, you're going to have so many things and rental income. So it becomes passive. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. If you can hold, and you don't need any of the big checks or quick checks, hold if you can. It's, it is absolutely the smarter play. Um, looking back, we're going to wish we had all yeah. of our flips as holdings, uh, but that's just not the way our company's set up. How much money to have set aside for repairs and unexpected expenses? And I'm pretty sure they're referring to when you flip a house. Oh, great question. Great question. Because this can save your butt, uh, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, but we do $10,000 per house. Uh, another rule is 10% of the total rehab budget. So if it's a $100,000 rehab, you need to put $110,000 in the budget just for things that you may not have expected or that pop up during the rehab. And this happens on almost every single project. So keep that in mind. Very few people do not go over budget when flipping a house. So keep that in mind. So if you have a $10,000 buffer there or a 10% buffer, it can really help you and always be super conservative with your numbers. If you need help doing your numbers, guys, you definitely need the software rehab evaluator. I'll link that below as well. Uh, it's an outstanding software. I don't pitch anything we don't use ourselves. Uh, we've been using the software for over two years now. We use it to manage over 20 projects at a time and use it on over a hundred projects to date. It's absolutely incredible and make sure that you you don't get confused or miss out on any numbers. It lists everything for you and it really just holds your hand through the project, especially with the numbers. So again, Rehab Valuator, the link will be in the description below. Okay, I'm gonna ask one more like real Q&A and then we're gonna do a fire round of the rest of the questions. Okay. So a friend of ours, BT, asked, how many months do you have to own a home to get long-term capital gains in West Virginia? Okay, so I don't think it's state based. It's just uh, it's nationwide. So you got short term, and you got long term capital gains. And what he's asking is, how long do you have to hold it before you get the better tax rate of long term capital gains? So it's one year, just like anything else. So anything under one year is going to be taxed just like ordinary income. So if we bought this house, which we did uh, in December, and we sold it now, and we made a profit on, on $30,000, it would be taxed as if we made short-term capital gains. So just like our paychecks or like your paycheck from work or okay. my income now. But if you hold it for longer than a year, it's on a long-term basis, which is either zero, 15 or 20% as I think the three different brackets yeah. and that's based on your income as well. Uh -huh. So if you make under a certain amount, you wouldn't pay anything. But if you make over $200,000 a year or something like that, you'll probably be 15% on that amount that you make. And check this out. You can actually pay nothing 
No taxes at all on your gains on up to 250,000 single and 500,000 if you're married. As long as you've lived in the home two out of the last five years, lived in it oh, and owned two. it. Only two. So yeah, only two of the last five. So you live in it one year, rent it out for three years, move back in it for one year, and then sell it after the five years. Two out of the last five years, as long as you lived in it, you pay nothing. So imagine that. Imagine making five hundred thousand dollars if you're married on a property and not paying any taxes on that. All you had to do is live in it for two years. So uh, BT, I hope that helps answer your question. You ready for the fire round? Let's do it. Okay. Do you invest outside of West Virginia? Yes, we have funded in multiple states, including Florida, Tennessee, Texas. Nice. Do you think it's ever too early to get started? Uh, no, yes. I have to, it's hard for me to do a fire round. No, it's never too early to get started as long as you're educated on what you're doing. That's so great. Okay, when is the best time to start educating yourself? Yesterday. <laughs> oh, that was a good answer. <laughs> when should I start saving for my dream home? For your dream home? Um, after everything else is set up, your passive income and everything else, save for your investments first so that your investments can pay for your dream home. Don't do it the other way around. It's just a word of advice. How often do APR rates change? Uh, whenever the Fed likes to raise and lower the rate. Um, so, and also banks can determine this and lenders can determine this. So quite often actually, but huge swings, not very often, uh, maybe once or twice a year, if that. Okay. Last question. Should I replace the roof on my house before I try and sell it? Probably. You'll probably get a higher return doing it that way and more buyers will be interested. And keep in mind, most banks will not lend on faulty roofs or foundations or things like that. So it's probably something that's going to be, have to be repaired before the sale anyway. Go ahead and have it done and, uh, and it'll probably show better and you'll probably get a higher offer. Beach or mountains? <sighs> Beach with a mountain view. Ice cream or cake? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Music or podcast? Music. Running or lifting weights? It was going to be anything else. <laughs> lifting weights. <laughs> All right, guys, that will wrap up this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it educational and it helped you guys out. Again, we would love to have you join our community, More Than Money, the link in the description below. Um, and that'll be it. And yep. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. See ya.